Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Senzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Sarah? I think there's something wrong with Silver. Anywho, uh, let's move on to the next person on the... Uh! <laughs> oh, no, I had that dream. I had that dream about the fish again. What? Fish? He's talking fish. about Mantine. Also doing your thing is the Terra. Oh, sorry, what? I blanked out for a second. <laughs> that, that, was, that was... I don't know, I didn't get anything. Because this comic is also a bit boring. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, anywho, in this uh, review, in this episode, we are going to review Friendship is Magic, issue number 79. Uh, in this issue, Twilight Sparkle and Apple Bloom plans a surprise for Mare Mare during the anniversary of the founding of Ponyville. So, yeah, um, this comic book was pretty fast, even though it had... What? Um, how many pages? Yeah, thirty-one pages. Uh, make that thirty. Make that a few more, less twenty something because of the preview for the comic back. But still, it was kind of fast. Oh, uh, so um, let's go for first impressions. Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see. It's really the tale of three separate stories all put together. The problem is that as you're trying to tell three stories, you don't you end up telling none. Because there's nothing to really get super invested in. It's all just sort of fluff. This feels like a filler comic. And I know that's kind of weird to say because this this series is usually a bunch of fun one shots anyway. Yeah, I mean which is true because uh as I was trying to look for was installed for the future. Um, yeah, we, we get a lot of one-shots. Like, uh, the next issue is going to be D&D, which is kind of exciting. Uh, the next one after that is Rainbow Dash and Wonder Bolts or something like that. So, yay! Or something like that. But this one, if I had to sum it up, what would you really say? This one? Like, what What is it? This one. Oh, uh, in all honesty, I, I think it's just... You know what? To, to sum it up... Okay. In all honesty, it's just that Mayor Mayor is doing a good job and everybody wants to throw her a party for her amazing job of taking care of Ponyville. And that's about it? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not, this isn't a character needs to do something. Look at those those descriptions you made. Uh, Pony D&D. Okay, there's a topic. Rainbow Dash and the Wonder Bolts. Okay, but there's a character and a topic. This... Is about a place and Mayor Mayor, but it's not really about Mayor Mayor, is it? We had it's, that. It was the election arc. Yeah, I mean, like, the the election arc, even though it was not great. I, you know, I, it, it, <laughs> I just have to be honest with you guys. The election arc was the only comic that we skipped. And it's not because that we hated it. It's just we, don't, we forgot that it, it even exists. Well, we're entering another election season. We can always double back. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I have to ask. Did we... Was that comic... If we did review, was it like four years ago? Yes. Oh my it, god. It came out right at the election time of 2016, which, by the way, I understand that we've had a sliding scale of awfulness. 2016 was bad. 2018 was horrible. 2020 is oh my god make it stop <laughs> it's like that one guy that's holding your hand and says come stop hitting yourself stop hitting yourself stop hitting yourself and so therefore yeah if you want to talk politics and elections i will have some cyanide on hand oh <laughs> uh, man it's not even a challenge anymore it's like <laughs> that topic is just a punching bag I thought silver was a punching bag. Not anymore. No, we're all life's punching bag. We are 2020's butt monkeys. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, Tara, what do you think of this comic? 
and it was boring. <laughs> as soon as like I was reading through the comic, as soon as I got to a certain part, it's like, okay, I know where this is going, and then this, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, and then it's, you know, it's a happy ending. I tried to make something funny about, uh, I tried to make it a little joke out of it, where, you know, Apple Bloom is being kind of sus, how she's uh, basically <laughs> being Mare Mare away from a certain place, you know, it's like she killed a, she killed someone, but she doesn't want her to find out about the body. I tried making a joke out of this. That's how bad the comic was. Yeah, and he, and here's the um, uh, depressing part. The comic is drawn by Tony Cusisto. Uh, that's pencils, pencil pony, and pencil pony's drawing is really awesome. But in this comic here, it felt like total randomness. I wonder if the really the purpose of this was sort of a throwaway comic story to test his metal. Nah, because if he was to test his metal, it was it would be his first debut. And if I'm not mistaken, the first debut was the uh, comic where Fluttershy turned into wild animals. Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know how it may go. Yeah, I mean, uh, it may be that that was not his the first comic he worked on. I don't know. I don't know comic production, but I feel like there's some other motive behind this. Is it just? It almost feels like a f- throwaway story. Yeah, I feel like fluff. Yeah. Uh, but anywho, uh, for me, I uh, man, this mm, there's a lot of plot holes. There's a lot of questions that are asked and never answered, and. Yeah, the, the, like I mentioned before, a lot of questions that are asked and never answered. But anywho, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I hope you find the comic entertaining. But anywho, we start off the comic with Mare Mare in her office doing work and... It seems that she's on the phone talking to somebody. It's and Pinkie Pie. Pinkie? Oh, yeah. Okay, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, she's talking to Pinky, and she... Pink, Pinky needs something? I'm not sure. Until there's a knock on the door, and it's Apple Bloom. And Apple Bloom uh, just says, uh, I'm doing a school project and we're supposed to ask our role models to show their favorite spot in Ponyville and the mayor is the, you're, you're my role model, yeah. So with that, the mayor takes a break and walks around with Apple Bloom to show her her favorite spot. And with that, they hit to, well, the spot. While they're going out of the building, they see the main six doing something sus. Oh no, what are they doing? I don't see Applejack. Oh no. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, okay. One thing I want to praise is that Tony took the support staff of Mayor Mayor from previous comics and drew them in his own style. Uh, Usually I find that with the IDW artists, they have like their OCs. Andy Price has the Watcher Pony. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, Tony Fleece has th- his Thunder Gremlins. But this is having, of all things, continuity <laughs> between the comics on very what what easily forgettable elements. I also kind of appreciate that uh, if you look on the left of the very first panel, this uh, light violet pink unicorn. With, with her hoof back, it looks like a heart. So he's keeping that going. But this also shows Tony's style is to often put a, an incredible amount of detail in certain sections. Like in this case, the engraving on Mayor Mayor's desk. And the detail on all these lines of the papers. Which, one, is a testament to his uh, artistic ability. But at the same time, it feels like it's trying to add a lot of detail around very simple design characters, which could feel jarring. Now, in terms of sneaking everyone out for Ponyville uh, and celebration, uh, it's like Torterra says, you you 
see it, you kind of know the situation right off the bat. And if you can predict all the beats, then it's a less satisfying journey. That is true, that is true. And also on top of that, um, the comic itself, uh, I, I think I'm kind of jumping the gun here, but the comic itself is not focused on one character. We're, we're focused on multiple and I think that's one of the major issues or the one of the problems with this comic. But anywho, um, Tara, what do you think? Well, I agree with Silver what he said with the detail because like in the first panel he already mentioned about the engravings on the desk. But I also like too how around the edge of the page, or I guess the panel, how you see Mira's stacks of paper coming because you can see how busy she can be. But other than that though, like it's just the, the setup. Like you... Again, Apple Bloom's like, "Hey, can I, can you see? Can I take you somewhere? I'm doing a school project." And then once you see Twilight saying, "Oh, Apple Bloom did it. We better get moving." You see this uh, stage. It's like, okay, yeah, they're planning a surprise for her. All right, with the Max panel, we we see a stage. Yes, we do see a stage, and said so stage is done by the citizen of Phonyville. We get to see that okay, they're trying to surprise the mayor by doing this show also thank you like what the ponyville anniversary spectacular and with that we get to see the ponies and also cranky uh, do a talent show contest and they're picking out the contestants and cranky seems to be out of place in this whole scenario here um, what he's only there because he's the what you call this? Um, what is the word that did she Twilight use? Um, representative, representative for the uh, Ponyville Founder Society. And in all honesty, why is Cranky there? I mean, he's no citizen of Ponyville, is he? Yes, he is. I mean, okay, yes, he is. Yeah, he is. Uh, he not, there. not a senior because. He moved there recently. Well, the here's the thing. What did Twilight do to offend the Ponyville Founder Society? There's the real question. Because they're like, oh, oh, you want to play this game? Here, here, have a curmudgeon. <laughs> oh, you're the princess of friendship? We're the princess of owning you. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, uh, let's go to the talent show. And I'm just going to speed things up because it's montage time. So we get to see Block by Seps. <laughs> Uh, doing his show, the weightlifting thing, and that's pretty cool. Twilight and Cranky are not into it. Uh, we see Applejack doing some lasso tricks, and Twilight is okay for it, and Cranky is not because he does not like the rope that Applejack is using, and this frustrates Twilight. Meanwhile, uh, with Mare Mare and Apple Bloom, Mare Mare shows. Apple Bloom, her favorite spot in Ponyville, and it's the Ponyville schoolhouse. And Apple Bloom says this perfect line For my school project, you brought me to my boring school. <laughs> Which is kind of fun. It's a fun line to add there because, yeah, I, I, I bring you, I want you to bring me to your fun spots, but you bring me to school. Like, what? <laughs> And Memory just says, oh, school's not boring. School is where years of Ponyville history is there. And also is the place where we nurture young minds to be great leaders for the future. And so on. And Apple Bloom realized, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense now. And with that, Memory wants to skedaddle back to the office and do some work. And... Apple Bloom notice. Oh no! No, it's not the time. No, it's not the time. Uh, let me kidnap you and bring you deeper into the school. So, back in City Hall, uh, we have Rarity playing the guitar and Cranky not liking the song that she's playing. Rainbow Dash did stuff, and Spike also shows his collection of glasses, and. Twilight is just getting angry at Cranky because uh, what she says, uh, Cranky Doodle, I know you're here as an elder for 
our community and I respect that. But if you say no to every single audition, we'll never find an act for the anniversary spectacular tonight. You, we only have one hour more. And yeah, that's just plain old... Pff, yeah, Cranky needs to be dumped. And Twilight just begs for Cranky to at least give a shot for the next guy who'll be performing on stage. And said guy is Big Mac. And he is going to do some wood carving. And somehow that impress Cranky. Uh, on the next panel, we see that, yo, um, there's some really suspicious looking ponies talking to their wrist or whatever it is and saying that uh, they have a confirmation on the whole uh, Ponyville stuff and yeah we see a hooded figure planning to do something devious Whoa. and I'm gonna pause here Tara what do you think I mean yeah, I got really nothing to say like that, I guess that's how boring this comic is <laughs> It's because I've you've seen this so many times on other shows or I guess movies. I don't know. I don't know if movies ever done it, but you know it's like like now it's basically two another plot. That's uh, how do you say it? cliche? Because you see all these auditions and it's like oh no, this one won't do. This one won't do either. This one will do, and then a surprise audition will, or a surprise act will come in and will be like oh this is perfect. It's like you know it's gonna happen. It's like why. <laughs> Maybe because they want to surprise us? I mean, while reading the comic, I was curious on who these mysterious ponies are, which later on we'll get to that. That's the, probably the only thing that got me interested. But other than that, everything else is right now, like, so far, just bland. Alright. And Silver, what do you think? <laughs> oh no. Jerk reintegration is great. <laughs> are you okay? Okay. Uh, uh, man times again <laughs> always always uh so there is one aspect to this that i will enjoy and praise it's that apple bloom her time with mayor mayor might give her a greater appreciation for what she has she says oh my school is so boring and and the mayor gives her something of a lecture on what it can do and if Apple Bloom is going to be any sort of leader in the future, it's good to have this perspective. I mean, okay, within the show, she's actually going to be a teacher herself. One, I realize that, that this is sort of retconny, but one could argue the mayor may help give Apple Bloom a change in perspective with this. But that's about it, because Cranky saying no to honestly some pretty pitiful acts already. What, a sunglasses collection? That's your talent spike? Have him play his armpit. He could play the That'd piano. Could he? His armpit's funny. Oh, he yeah. should, but our armpits is funnier. True, true. I mean, okay, I know it's the humor's really hit the pits. <laughs> By and large, yeah, that's the the there isn't a lot of genuine character interaction in terms of two personalities playing off one another. It's just the same joke repeated again and again and again. And it's not even that funny. I this guy, but I'm actually reading this book, How One Joke Can Save, a, One joke can save Us All. <laughs> and it talks about how humor is born when lack and excess are brought together in an unlikely combination. That's the humor. <laughs> so right now... What are what are the ponies really lacking? Time? It's not really emphasized. There's not a, there's not an excess of talent. There's actually a lack of uh there's a lack of talent on display and a lack of interest from Cranky. That's all it is. It's it's a bit of a well, we are suffering a lack of interest as a result. And what about the mysterious ponies? Oh no, I'm sure that a true villain is going to appear and ruin the, the play. That is what I, I mean, thought. Yeah. Oh no. This, this isn't quite, you know, edge of your seat, oh no, what's going to happen? You are tr- you got two ponies we've never seen before talking about 
uh, a time deadline. And the thing is, uh, they're going up against Twilight Sparkle. You really think your your standard fair villain is going to even stand a chance at this point? There was that one shadow pony person, dude guy thing. Who could bring uh, fictional creatures to life. He was probably Twilight's worst nightmare. Yep. Oh, the thing I love is trying to kill me. Oh, this is still the second best day of my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the, the thing about this book or this issue is that they, they're they splitting up the stories into three parts, quote-unquote three parts. We have the Apple Bloom story, we have the Twilight and Cranky story, and then we have this mysterious evildoer that is going to ruin the party or whatever it is just they're doing. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, okay, uh, this is going to be cool. I, I can't wait to see the conflict because... Uh, we we will get to see Mer Mer decide or Mer Mer dictate how to handle things in a time of crisis. Yeah, I can't wait to see that story, man. Woo! Keep on waiting. Keep on waiting. I mean, technically, we saw the Mayor Mayor making decisions back in the election arc, which we skipped. <laughs> oh, God. But anyway, yes, uh, I'm going to carry on. So if that Apple Bloom brings... I remember inside the schoolhouse to do some science and play with chemicals. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be awesome. And Mayor Mayor says, Apple, I really need to get back to work. Anyway, um, you're taking advantage of my kindness and stuff. So she needs to go back to Ponyville or town to. Uh, sort the Ponyville anniversary thing. And, uh oh, what's this? Apple Bloom is talking to her wrist. She has some kind of watch thingy, invisible time thing stuff, communicator. Ooh, what's this? And we move on to Mimir, where she heads to town, to office, and. Uh, she sees everyone's missing. Oh no, the background, the skyline is red. That means something bad is going to happen. Oh no. And Mimir is worried about the whole situation because where is every pony? And oh, it's just a surprise. Oh, yay. Okay, the, the chaos is going to happen soon enough. So Twilight comes in, uh, says that, yo, this is a surprise for you. Um, um, it's just one problem. We couldn't find an act. And before anything can happen, uh, a pony or a creature off stage says, Oh, there will be a performance tonight. And it's Sunset Shimmer and those two random ponies that we don't know. And yeah, there's going to be a show. Yay. And the song is terrible. Wow. What? <laughs> it is not. Uh, it, 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 what? Is well, it... I mean, you can't really hear the song in a comic, Norman. Well, I can just imagine the song. It's like, Ponyville, you rock so wrong. You rock Ooh, another Norm century. Norman's got death metal on the noggin. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you cannot run away. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I, I model myself after Death Clock. <laughs> but yeah, anywho, it's it, it sounds a shimmer. <laughs> okay, uh, I I can't wait for the crisis that's gonna happen. Uh, yep, crisis is gonna happen because we had that cloak for figure and stuff. I'm gonna pause here because uh, this is just because the death metal is getting too strong in your noggin. You can't drown out the the ever depressing ever depressing rhythm. No, no. The <laughs> darkness in your heart is coming to the forefront. Oh uh, no, Sora! <laughs> get rid of the darkness. <laughs> but anywho, usually ask you guys, but now I'm gonna go for this one, man. Like, what the hell? Like, literally, what the hell? What is? He? What? I mean. If this was Celestia and Cantalot, Sunset Shimmer showing up and rocking for Celestia, I can't get. But this is 
Pointyville. What the hey? I never heard Norman freak out like this. I have. <laughs> uh, no, here's the thing. I like Sunset. Sunset is one of my favorite characters. But it feels like they just shoehorn her in. There's no rhyme or reason for her to be there. Okay, maybe there's a line where Sunset says, N- Next time, maybe you'll remember to invite me to your parties. And poof, she's gone. Like, wh- what? I. Sunset employs her greatest magic, the power of passive aggression. <sighs> she's also a ninja. Yep, true that. No, but still, oh man. Silver, what do you think, man? Like, uh, say stuff for me, please. Stuff for me, please. <laughs> How can I put this? I like Sunset too. I, actually, I thought that was probably the most novel uh, element in this in this comic because I didn't expect to see Sunset. In fact, when I wrote a review for this on Equestria Daily, I specifically did not talk about Sunset being in it because I didn't want to spoil it for anyone in advance. Of course, the comments section did that themselves. As is the, as is the nature of comment sections. Let's be honest. Mm, true, true. But come on, it's fun to Sorry. see her. But what? Who are the other ponies? I, How does she know them? Where did they come from? What are their names? Where did they Why? go? Where did they come from, Cotton Eye Joe? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, oh man, am I the only... Tara, you also can chime in on this one if you feel like to. But am I the only one that feels like Sunset here is just shoehorned in just because? And okay, it is a red herring. I, I was just playing it up for laughs because okay we, we see the two ponies there uh, communicating to sunset about oh the party in one hour blah 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 and then we see a cloak figure in the darkness and yes yeah, she's saying excellent excellent and stuff i mean it feels like an evil plot right maybe celestia is the one who clued sunset in Oh, Sunset, Ponyville's having a celebration. You should go there and passively aggressive berate them. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just impressed that Sunset can play guitar with hooves. I mean, at this point, she's bound to be more used to fingers. Mm, if Rarity can do it, so can Sunset. Well, Rar- Rarity, she will rock you. Yeah. do 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 Yeah. But... It's... I thought that was the the salute for Firebrand soldiers. <laughs> well, that, well, that's because they're fabulous. <laughs> just... It's multi, it's multifunctional. Okay, I, I just noticed something else too. The pony that says uh, "Sunset Shimmer" is Mermare. I what? <laughs> Come on! Well, she's in the audience. Yeah, but, but how that... does she know who she is? See, exactly. That's what I'm gonna say. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> what I'm sure Twilight told stories. Yeah, but pictures probably actually, not. Actually, uh, Pinkie Pie, I bet you she like recounted this tale of Twilight in a foreign universe to every pony, because she'd be like, "Oh, isn't this so cool? Twilight did this, this, and this, and this, and here's a picture of Sunset Shimmer as drawn with bacon." <laughs> bacon? What's bacon? The answer will only make you cry. <laughs> oh man, but. Still, uh, you know what? I, I, I'm going to carry on because it's almost the end. <sighs> okay, carrying on. Uh, Sunset's performance was awesome, I guess, because a lot of hoofs were clapping. Even Cranky is just uh, whooping for encores. Oof, that's great. Then, uh, being the jerk that she is, this version of Sunset bows out and then poofs into thin air. Then... Mary goes up on stage and says that this is awesome. Thank you for the nice surprise. But let's celebrate and partay. And they do so. We, we get to see a lot of background ponies. We get to see a lot of ponies doing their stuff. And well, 
Coming ends. Yeah, coming ends. So, anywho, Silver, final thoughts. Well, okay. Walson says plane, and there's the applause. There's one panel where it's the back of every pony's head. You can't see any figures on stage. The foreground is blue, while bright red, uh, pinks and reds and orange uh, represent the stage, and that is where the eye is drawn. These warm, bright colors in a cooler gray, a uh, cooler blue and purple setting. This panel bothers me because the, I don't see where my focus is supposed to lie. Is it just on the clap, clap, clop? Clip, clap, clip, clop. Okay. I, I, I feel like they were really struggling just to figure out what to fill that space with. Yeah, I, I see what you mean there. I mean, in all honesty, they could have just made the panel with Cranky a bit wider. And then at the very end... During the setup, the initial setup panel, you saw that one unicorn, uh, one Pegasus stallion had gotten himself tied and was dangling from the set. Somehow, he is still tied, still dangling, but now he's on the other side of the set, which is a new level of in either incompetence or really, really mean co-workers. Let's just say it's incompetence because you have Derpy doing a stellar job of not breaking stuff. Oh no, I, I I think no, not really because Derby did uh, help the pony down. Did she? Because yeah, I because yeah, she did actually. Yep, she did. Okay, yeah. Well, then I I guess I miss it. Well, Derby's on the other side. Oh yeah, she helped. He got tied up again. Okay, yeah, he's a moron. <laughs> it's like you know you could just. You could just hang there and let all the blood go to your head. Which, I've had that happen to me. It is very disorienting. I do not want to ask how that happened. Oh, I can tell you. It'd be more interesting story than this comic. <laughs> oh, wait. Maybe I'll tell you after. It could be a Patreon reward story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. But, yeah. Oh, carry on, Silver. Even when Mayor Mayor is trying to give a speech and Fluttershy says, take this, please, gives her a headset, which, again, we're, we're dealing with technology in this beyond what I'm used to. But, uh, sorry, uh, I have to interrupt for a bit because here's the thing. Um, the headset microphone combo, we've seen that before with uh, Iron Will in season two. So it's not that jarring. Yes, and we've seen it with an announcer in... Uh, uh, the Sonic Rainboom episode. It was a it was a much less intrusive headset, but yes, headsets. But also consider that we've seen a telephone, mm -hmm. older style than the cell phones we see in Pony Life, but still, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a technology not often witnessed, aside from a talking banana. And then there's suddenly a communication spell on your well, hoof, wrist. wrist. Like, yeah, is, is, it wrist? <laughs> is it is it a wrist? I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I'll have to ask Sweetie Blue. Sweetie Blue. <laughs> but put simply, there's a lot of elements in this that uh, that are more than the average pony show. It's a bit more modern. If, it, yeah, and even uh, Sunset and her two unnamed musicians are using that same spell. Everybody's using that spell all of a sudden. So, I, it's just a lot of elements here either feel underwhelming or just feel like they're not part of the show's usual rhythm. And then there's this idiot who got tied up again. <laughs> and he's just glaring at Fluttershy as she reads a book in the middle of a party, which I've had nights like that. <laughs> uh, I mean, he needs help, but he's too shy to ask for it. <laughs> that or he just likes staring at Fluttershy. A little bit of creeper. Yeah, I mean, Discord ain't going to like that. But anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? Well, as I said once, and I'll say it again, this comic is boring. Like, it was a bit... Well, it was out of nowhere that Sunset just comes and goes, just for some strange reason. And, yeah, I don't know why she got into it. Like, I don't know why she was brought into this story. You know, just, I guess, for surprise sake, because, you know, they want to just go along with the cliche and be like oh we gotta put a surprise in here somewhere 
but we don't want to make it too cliche. Let's bring in Sunset for no reason. It's like, okay, but we need an explanation. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, oh, God. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the problem that I have. Anyway, before I carry on. Uh, Tara, is there anything more? Well, no, I'm just saying, I'm just going to say that, you know, this comic was just so full of cliches. And you could also see that Applejack is the best background pony in the last panel. <laughs> oh? If you notice in the last page where they have the end, you can see Applejack with her hat right behind Pinky. You can't see, though, because she's all covered in blue. Really, no? Oh, yeah, she's right near the window. Oh, my goodness. Why the hell? Yeah, it's like spot that silhouette. Why? Why was she? Oh my god! Oh. If she doesn't get to join in with the other, she's in the background. Why? Why? Because she is one with Ponyville. But the, and Ponyville is the background for this. Oh, oh my goodness! Like even the old pony with the glasses is there. What? Maybe Tony didn't feel like drawing Applejack. Yes. I can't deal with those freckles. They're too cute. All right. Anywho, uh, as for me, uh, this comic, when I remember reading it first, I was kind of miff at sunset. Like, wh- why, 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 why are you there? I mean, what? But overall, um, let, let's go from the top. The story was okay. Uh, we, from the moment we already saw Twilight and the gang, we can clearly tell, okay, um, they're going to throw Mermer a party because what has been telegraphed by the phone call that Pinky had with Mermer. But asking Cranky, that was the first strike. Like, wh- why? why? Why Cranky? I mean... He's not that positive of a character to have. Every time he's been on the episode or show, comic, whatever it is, it's somehow turned out pretty bad. And then, as we carry on, we we see the setup of a perfect villain attack. Nothing too strong, but still, it will be perfect for Mermer to show her capability of taking care of Ponyville or something like that. But no, 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 no. It's just Sunset Shimmer popping out of nowhere and Sunset, like, what? why? How is she there? What? Why? It makes no sense. And that's the plot hole that this episode or this comic brings up. Like, why? And, and the only reason why this comic can work this way is because we can't hear the voice. Like, uh, the silhouette pony says, Excellent. And then, uh, we, we get to see stuff like, what? Um, I, I'm trying to take a look to see at what the cloak pony figure says. I mean, there's only a line. Excellent. Because since this is a comic and we read, we don't imagine the sound of the character's voice. Or we can't hear the character's voice at all. Uh, but still... Uh, it's the oh man, sunset. I feel like it's just wasted. It's not even Celestia. Oh, if I crying out loud. And yeah, I I guess that's I, I'm done with it. I mean, it's an interesting comic, but oh my goodness, there's a lot of things that I really know. Oh, those are my thoughts. Oh my god. It's like, what else can you say, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, even the sunset part, like, okay, let's let's break down, like, okay, let's let's break down and theorize why was she there? Could it be a ploy that Mermer hired Sunset to play for the, um, what you call this, uh, the f- celebration? Nope, because we get to see a line where um, she asks, like, is that Sunset Shimmer on stage? Like, okay, clearly that's not her plan. So, is it just Sunset just crashing the party? Yep. 
Sometimes it's just as simple as that. Sunset crashes the party, but in a good way. Uh, that means <laughs> that means that somebody set up the uh, Ponyville historical community. Was it? Sunset has an inside. Eight. It turns out she, Cranky was working with her all along. He sabotaged the entire thing to give her a chance to shine. It's Cranky is a double, triple, quadruple chocolate sprinkled agent. It felt that way because he's an imposter. Oh no! That, felt, that sounds like a title Pinkie Pie would use as a secret agent. <laughs> but it felt that way. It felt that the thing with Cranky was just to get Sunset up on stage. Like, oh my god! <sighs> but I'm gonna wrap this up. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I see. If you guys have not read this comic. Eh, I, I say give it a skip. You ain't missing anything. Unless you're a diehard Sunset fan. Not, not even. I mean, even if you're a diehard Sunset fan, you're, you're just going to get pissed off by just reading this. I mean, I like I like Sunset a lot, but even I still don't understand why she's in this comic. I, so. I know, right? <laughs> like, oh, man. More Sunset is awesome. But at least give proper context. It's not like she is a multidimensional traveler that has a bar inside a alternate dimension and calls it Sunset's Isekai. <sighs> Wait, if Sunset had a bar, that would make her an even more awesome character. That is a fanfic that exists, Silver. Drinks are on Sunset. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. But the bar would be closed at Sunset. At which point, Starly takes over. <laughs> Yay. But anywho, uh, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, I believe we're headed back to Pony Life, which I'll see if it can invoke as much rage in Norman as this comic has. It's a very rare event on the NBS show when uh, Norman's the most cheesed off of us. That is true. <laughs> but recently, I, I have been showing rage. That's not good. Wow. Uh, I think it's an appropriate response to the times. Yeah, but recently, they, like, it's... I've been doing it more often, so that's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. One one episode will have Norman Hulk out. Oh, no. And only the power of a wheel can calm him. <laughs> oh, boys. So, yeah. But we're... Well, honestly, we're going to get into probably my least favorite arc of Pony Life. Hmm. Okay. Uh, th this would be the start of Fluttershy's Trail Trotter. So we're going to start with the Trail Less Trotten. Ah, okay. Can't wait. Can't wait. It's good. I, I hope it's going to be fun. I need fun in my life. Depends on your definition of fun, I guess. Mm, true, 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 true. Uh, but anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sunso. Silver, where can the good people find you? Uh, the usual spots. Check out Twitter and DeviantArt MLP Silver Quill. On Kofi and Patreon, just Silver Quill. You can find me. Uh, doing a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, my videos shall appear. And on EquestriDaily.com, you can find my comics and editorials posted on Wednesdays. Awesome. Guys, go check him out. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, TV, or Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortilla1324. Or they can just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome. Check him out. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion, podcast, exclusive, and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have you, Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vakuya. And I am the Tower and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya! Stay tuned for 00 Cranky, Party Crusher.
Ooh, can't wait to see that. So, Silva, what about the story? Oh, yes, now we're in the Patreon-only thing. This was way back in my college days. I was a young and wild individual. <laughs> And I'm gonna smack Torterra with this pair of blue Pokeballs. <laughs> oh no, not again!